I would like to welcome every distinguished colleague and thank all of the presenters that came before me. I would also like to follow where Mary left off with her presentation with the PSTP judgment. And I would like us to travel back in time to 2020, but instead of May to December, and uh, to the time where the Court of Justice of the European Union ruled against Hungary and claimed that Hungary uh, actually failed to comply with EU law because uh, we did not uh, let uh, asylum seekers into the country and uh, did not uh, adequately respond to the challenges that were imposed because of this crisis. Uh, in response to this, the then Justice of uh, Minister of Justice, Judith Varga, asked the Constitutional Court of Hungary to take a stance on whether uh, the fundamental law of the country or the EU law has primacy. And the court refused to answer this question, of course, but in the judgment claimed that we have a right to identity. What is this right to identity? What does it encompass? First of all, it encompasses the constitutional identity of Hungary, the territorial integrity, and also the essential state functions. We can find all of these uh, definitions in the Treaty on the European Union's uh, Article 4, um, Section 2, where it says that uh, the member states have this right to uh, constitutional identity and also essential state functions. It also provides some examples of what essential state functions entail, for example, national security, territorial integrity, and also maintaining law and order, but there are many more which are not uh, listed in this uh, treaty. Now, I would like us to discuss these issues, specifically uh, in the case of Hungary, because as you all know, and I'm sure that in the presentation on Poland, we will also hear more about it, we have a different stance on where the integration should go, in how the EU should proceed. And uh, this is why I wanted to pose this question, like, are stronger member states better for our integration in the long run? Are they helping us reach a stronger EU, a stronger integration, or is it the other way around, where nationalist uh, mm, ideas are maybe uh, inherently wrong in the context of uh, integration? Like, how is this possible? And first of all, when we talk about the future of the Euro European Union and how sovereignty and the primacy of the EU coexist and how us as member states can coexist and become stronger <coughs> to help with the uh, government, with policies, and also with economy, which was the main aim of the EU upon its creation, I first wanted to talk to you about sovereignty. Like, I am sure that all of you know what it is, but I wanted to uh, refresh your mind and hopefully get you to start thinking about what all of this entails and what kind of competences can be given over to the EU. Like, sovereignty is an essential characteristic of statehood and it has two sides, the internal and the external, as you all know. Within the internal side, we can see that it is the capacity of the state to determine and maintain its internal state legal order autonomously and to exercise sovereignty over natural and legal persons and things within its territory. So it is something that, uh, for example, how we deal with uh, issues on uh, marriage, environment, stuff like this, but the external side is the one that has more to do with the EU. For example, the state is independent and it has a free and autonomous uh, will that it can exercise as it participates in the international life of an equal footing with any other state. Now, sovereignty can be found in the fundamental law of Hungary, which is the name of the constitution, in Article E, and the most important part of it is uh, Section 2 for us as well where we can see that uh, the allocation of the competencies was set in the fundamental law when we uh, became part of the EU in 2004. And in constitutional democracies, the supreme power of the state can be understood as a power constituted by the community of citizens, and uh, it is not unlimited. As you can see, we have already limited our own sovereignty to some extent by our exception to the EU, and uh, we would like to defend, of course, sovereignty to a certain extent while working together with the EU and becoming a stronger part of the integration. This is where the question is posed whether the defense of sovereignty 
can lead to the defense of constitutional identity and uh, how this constitutional identity can also maybe used to stop uh, integration or to slow it down or to steer it in a different direction perhaps, which uh, I think would be the correct answer to uh, get us to all have our own uh, interests and uh, desires uh, realized by also working together because we can also uh, only be a part of the world scene if we are standing together strongly. Now, this is why the primacy of the EU law is so important, so that we can uh, all work together and have a legal framework within which uh, the member states are not so different that okay. integration becomes useless. I have already, we have already here that uh, the primacy of EU law is where a conflict arises between an aspect of EU law and an aspect of law in an EU member state, for example in Hungary in the case that I mentioned, national law, uh, the EU law is the one that shall prevail, so that we can, as I mentioned before, work together. There is a brief declaration annexed to the Treaty of Lisbon in regard to this, and it's not uh, found anywhere else. There was uh, two cases, the Van Gendernus and the Costa uh, Contra NL case. The first one, you can see that the laws adopted by EU institutions were capable of creating legal rights, which could be enforced by both natural and legal persons before the courts of the member states, making EU law have a direct effect. This is what uh, the main point of this case was. And uh, the next case was about how the court introduced the idea that the aims of the treaties would be undermined if EU law could be made subordinate to national law. As has been stated, for example, uh, in the PSPP case, we heard that the ultra virus um, concluded that where there is no EU law, then the uh, national law should take effect. And the primacy of EU law must be applied to all national acts, whether they were adopted before or after the EU act in question, but it only applies where member states have ceded sovereignty to the EU. So, of course, where in states, uh, central state functions and other areas, for example, transportation, environment, uh, stuff like this, uh, there is no primacy of the EU. It only appears uh, in areas which are crucial to the integration success. You can also see that there was uh, an Advocate General's opinion in the Costa Quento NL case, where uh, he stated that the problem which results from the coexistence within each member state of two systems of law, domestic and community, each operating in its own sphere of competence, nor can we avoid the question what sanction would follow the enrochment by one. Uh, so basically what he wanted to say here is that uh, how can we make uh, member states keep in touch with the primacy in the EU law? How can we help them to uh, ensure that the cooperation is successful? And uh, I also wanted to mention the PSPP judgment and the Zolange judgment, which we have heard about in uh, bigger detail. But I just want quickly want to mention that the PSPP judgment, uh, as we have heard, uh, in it the German Constitutional Court was keen to stress its respect for primacy. Uh, of course, they also want bigger integration, but uh, facing its refusal to apply. Uh, the judgment of the Court of Justice of the European Union on the argument that the Court of Justice had exceeded its jurisdiction. And yes, this is where the line should be drawn very clearly, like where is uh, this metaphorical line in the sand, where we say that uh, no more, this is uh, competence of the member state itself, and not uh, in the hands of the EU in any capacity at all. <coughs> this is something to think about for the future. The Zola and the legal theory consists of, uh, it was developed as a legal theory regarding what it considers may override the application of the consequences of privacy. In the Zola and the one, the Constitutional Court of Germany accepted jurisdiction to rule on a conflict between community law and the German Constitution and uh, claimed that the Constitution should take precedence as long as the level of protection of fundamental rights equivalent to the level offered by German Constitutional law was not guaranteed by the EU law. Now, in the second judgment, it refused to carry out a review as long as the applicant failed to show that the protection of fundamental rights under EU law did not correspond to the protection guaranteed by the Constitution. 
And I personally believe that uh, where there is a higher standard in a member state than in the EU, then of course the higher standard should always be kept in respect. And it can also be considered to be an essential state function, like jurisdiction, for example, and uh, the protection of fundamental rights. Now, the Constitution of Court has stated that uh, they start to use the concept of the constitutional identity of Germany, which echoed this uh, Article 4 section that I have mentioned in the beginning of my presentation. And this concept of national constitutional identity means that the member states can define its own uh, national identity, but the decision about the compatibility, compatibility of the national identity with EU obligations uh, has always been based in the European Court of Justice. So under the revised identity clause, um, member state constitutions can specify matters of constitutional identity and constitutional courts can apply the identity control test, which uh, we have also heard about is in the case in Germany. And uh, in the case of Hungary, the fundamental law recognizes the source of law of the European Union when it states that the European Union may be within certain limits laid down generally binding the rule of conduct but it does not uh, provide for the primacy of the application of EU law or its place in the hierarchy of the sources of law, and it merely contains a procedural rule for primary law. Uh, the majority requirement for authorization does not imply a hierarchy between EU law and domestic law, but uh, the fundamental law has, uh, of course, the clause that I mentioned. Now, how do we um, implement these uh, EU acts, the law in Hungary? Now, the Minister of Justice was the one that coordinated the harmonization activities for the purpose of compliance with the law of the European Union and uh, developed, for example, legal harmonization programming and organized the legal harmonization tasks uh, in a legal harmonization database and also monitored and promoted, of course, the fulfillment of legal harmonization tasks. Uh, but now we have a new ministry for European Union affairs and uh, we will just have to see how the uh, Hungarian uh, point of view will be heard in the next year, 2024, as I'm sure you have all heard even today, that uh, we will be at the forefront of uh, which direction to steer the ship, so to say. And uh, I will be interested to see how much influence the Hungarian point of view can have in this regard. And by the harmonization obligation typically arises in the case of directives um, which explicitly require the adoption of national legal legislation, uh, it is important to know that other EU acts uh, also uh, require or may require legislation or implementation at national level. And EU regulations also may require the regulation tasks due to their direct applicability or additional legislative tasks of an implementing nature of national level. And these deserve, of course, particular attention and can also lead to infringement proceedings, which uh, we have seen many of in Hungary. And uh, hopefully will uh, become more clear in which direction we want to go, not just in Hungary, but also in the EU as a whole because uh, right now, um, of course, I agree that integration is a wonderful thing, but uh, the member states clearly have problems with it in, in the direction that it is going now and in the way that it is uh, achieved at this very moment. As we can see from the PSPP judgment, from judgments in Hungary, in Poland, and also many other similar judgments which uh, claim that the constitutional identity and the right to identity is uh, more important to them than the primacy of EU law or the integration process as mm -hmm. the way it is now. And the question that I would like to leave you with is, uh, again, better, stronger member states and uh, trying to cooperate and trying to find a common ground with as many member states as possible is uh, useful for the future and uh, better we should try to uh, discuss which uh, by the uh, line in the sand is when it comes to the allocation of competences. Thank you very much for your attention.